and welcome to this ET Now special. I'm Nantara Rai. In the run-up to the union budget on 1st of February, we get you a special broadcast uh, with the CII. We've got CII's top team right here to give their prescription for growth, what they think should make up a good economic vaccine on 1st of February. CII's president-designate and the top boss of Tata Steel, TV Narendran with us, CI Vice President and the top boss at Bajaj Finsa, Sanjeev Bajaj with us and the Director General at CII, Chandrajit Banerjee. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on ET Now. At the outset, let's just say it first. This is a budget which is being seen as a now or never exercise. Look at what's happened in 2020, the kind of contraction that we saw in the economy. Expectations are sky high from the central exchequer. The belief is that now or never for the Modi government to loosen its purse strings and not get involved in academic discussions like that of fiscal deficit. Let's try and figure out what India Inc. wants, what India Inc.'s prescription for growth is. TV Narendran, I'll come to you first. You're the president-designate. You're also the top boss at uh, Tata Steel. Yes, we have started to see manufacturing come back in the economy. But as that also happens, what we are seeing signs of, and these are early signs, is of inflation. Look at your own sector. Look what's happening in metals and the commodity markets. This is perhaps the last thing that the global economy needed, but it certainly needs to be dealt with. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, what you're seeing is uh, a recovery which has been better than most people expected globally and in India. And obviously, when you look at metals and you look at a lot of commodities, uh, uh, there are there have been supply chain uh, constraints over the months. And sometimes the recovery in supply is not as fast as the recovery in demand. And that translates into uh, prices going up globally. That's what has happened. Uh, also, these are sectors over the last 10 years where uh, the returns have not been so great. So you can argue that there's been some underinvestment. I'm not talking about uh, in India, but globally as well. So uh, sometimes the consequences of that is uh, short-term inflation, as you say. But I think things will settle over a period of time. And, uh, you know, if the growth comes back to normal levels, I think the prices will also settle to levels that uh, are closer to long-term average than what we're seeing now. So before I go to the other, Mrs. Rendran, I have a follow-up question to what you're saying. So you're saying this is a short-term development. Would that mean that uh, companies are therefore not uh, incre going to increase their capex and are going to look at long-term fixes as far as supply goes? Of course, this corollary of all of this would mean more manufacturing, more jobs. I do believe uh, companies will invest to grow, particularly in a market like India. Uh, we've lost a couple of years because of the pandemic, but uh, we expect things to get better this year and next year and uh, go back to the normal growth levels that we saw pre-pandemic. And uh, so the investment cycle will come back. I think uh, the last couple of years, uh, everyone uh, has been deleveraging, rightly so. But as demand comes back and margins come back, uh, we will see the investment cycle back. And I think that's what I expect uh, for manufacturing in India. And I think many of the governments... Uh, initiatives have uh, encouraged manufacturing in India for India. And I think that's important. We are a market where you can build skill because of the domestic requirements. And I think uh, when you uh, get manufacturing investments up, the whole ecosystem comes up. We've seen that in the auto industry over the last 20, 30 years, an ecosystem which included some world-class auto component manufacturing. So I expect that to happen in other sectors of manufacturing. The expectation, of course, is that the uh, budget 2021 will also talk about manufacturing, maybe more Atmanirbhar schemes and all of that. For taking that cue, Sanjeev Bajaj, let me come to you. All of this, of course, requires capital as well. Uh, going into budget 2021, there has been a lot of news and a lot of headlines around the financial services sector. You've got the RBI, which is trying to reduce the arbitrage now between NBFCs as well as private banks. We've also seen a flush of liquidity, a lower interest rate regime, all this talk of a bad bank. I want to focus with you on those two policy moves that could be seeing light of the day, whether it's a bad bank or reducing the arbitrage between NBFCs and banks. Right noise ahead of the budget? Well, it's always good to have some noise before the budget. Um, as Naren has also just talked about and as is clear, Given the low base of growth this year, the negative growth, the worry is not about next year. The worry is what happens thereafter. 
and this is the time for the budget and for the rest of us to prepare ourselves for the future, both to get consistent growth back over the next uh, three years, but more importantly, to set our economy up to achieving what Atan Nirbhar India and Make in India can be, which is to become the manufacturing gateway after China to the world. If you have to do this, you have to have a robust financial services sector. And we, we must attract all the foreign capital that we can get, uh, of course, within a set of sensible guidelines. But we must equally and importantly create a strong domestic financial services industry, because that's going to be with us for the rest of our lives. Keeping that in mind, today when 70% of banking is with public sector banks that are saddled with bad debt, you have to take that out of the system. And that's where a bad bank or multiple bad banks come into play. But that's not enough. After that, you must professionalize them. The government, other than a few key strategic PSBs, must divest their majority stake in the rest so that you professionalize them and prevent a bad bank requirement from coming up again a decade down the line. So you need to do that. As far as the uh, NBFC new supervision guidelines have come, this is not about arbitrage. Uh, there will always be arbitrage different, different models and arbitrage by itself is not a bad word. What was important was large NBFCs were still being regulated quite lightly irrespective of banks. And that is where RBI has come out with a set of tighter supervision and regulation for these large NBFCs, which makes a lot of sense. It, it is something that must be done. I will, I will leave with the point, uh, last point on this uh, issue, uh, Nantara, which is just rules doesn't make a difference. Otherwise, no banks should fail. Why are banks failing? Hence, it is equally important that the management of those banks and NBFCs have to be of good quality. It is equally important that the regulator needs to see that you don't just make rules, but you end up with proper supervision and monitoring them as well. Mr. Bajaj, you know, CII has time and again also talked about the need for multiple bad banks and how alternative investment funds, AIFs, could actually buy the bad loans. Would you say that this is the right time? I'm taking forward from what you just told me. It is absolutely timely for this to be done. If you have a very large problem, then very often the solution is not clear. But if you break the problem up into smaller pieces, then you can apply individual solutions for each piece. And that's where CI's recommendation of multiple bad banks comes about. When you talk of these multiple bad banks, these are not banks really, these are uh, asset books of different industries. It could be different levels of stress. It could be different uh, geographies. This is something that intelligently would need to be broken up so that we become, each of these little books become attractive to buyers. And let's keep in mind, if you open it up to alternate uh, investment funds, you open it up to foreign uh, capital, there are there is expertise that lies all over the world, in the de developed world especially, how to efficiently manage um, these kind of assets and take them to resolution. So we might as well benefit from those while creating the space with some additional capitalization of the existing banks to go about extending credit, which is very much required if we have to get economic growth back to 7 8% and why not 10% and more in the coming years. Chandrajit Banerjee, if I can come to you now, I have attempted to address manufacturing with TV Narendran, uh, the banking sector with Sanjeev Bajaj. I want to ask you another question, which is that the budget, which is an economic exercise, is also a political exercise. We're doing this interview a day after Republic Day, where we saw those horrific images at Red Fort in the national capital. You have had farmer protests running into weeks and weeks now with no uh, thaw in sight. How apprehensive is industry or how convinced is industry that this budget could also be a populist one? Be a populist one? I would think, uh, I mean, the budget could be a popular one without being a populist one. And that's, that's going to be the critical uh, uh, you know, point which the government would also have to exercise. And as we go along, we, you know, there is, there is a lot that needs to be done for many sections of the society. Very important is that the poor needs uh, to be supported at all costs. 
uh, increase in poverty is not acceptable despite what has happened in the pandemic situation. So the government would have to really look at it as to how it creates employment. Uh, that's going to be one big area that the government would have to focus on. It would also really look, look at look at seeing how it can demand, how it can activate demand. So there will be a lot that would be also focused towards. Uh, so you have the you have job creation. You'll have the middle class to be uh, seen whether it can be. In, in terms of uh, you know some some um, uh, help towards uh, taxation, uh, 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 which would really help them also create demand. And of course, we should not see a situation where uh, the rich are inappropriately taxed. So there is going to be a, this will be a budget, I believe, a budget for all rather than a popular popular budget. But I mean, it will be a popular budget and not really a populist budget. And that's where the finance minister has to make a huge balance. And she has been time and again she has said that you heard in december in the cii partnership summit that this is a budget for one in a, you know, one in 100 years and it's going to be something that a budget that we have never seen before so all of that doesn't really mean that there's going to be a, a lot of populist measures which is being taken but one would like to see the context of what you said one would like to see also very strong reforms coming into the budget because the reform story which the india has, which india has started on has to be continued, and the budget must reflect some important uh, b b reforms areas uh, b which which it should carry on. I mean, uh, Naren mentioned on the uh, b b b of, uh, some, some part of it. Uh, Sanjeev uh, b b elaborated on the financial sector of it. But it should actually be seen in other sections of the society uh, where we see in things including land or, of course, labor is one. We need to see a very strong move towards healthcare. We need to see a three percent, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 towards healthcare over a period of time. So we need to see all of that. All and, and, and we need to see education reforms coming in. So all of this really do not tantamount to anything which is uh, populist. But I would think that this will make it very, very popular. Narendran, you just uh, heard how CB Banerjee talked about the, the rich should not be punished. And this is, of course, against the overhang of will we see a super rich COVID surcharge. That is seeming to be the expectation. But the expectation also is that we need to bring infrastructure back, that we have to have qualitative government spending. And ideally, the private sector should also be increasing capex and participating. It has been very stubborn now for many, many years and a better part of this decade. TV Narendra, what can be done in budget 2021? Give me your top two or three recommendations which will get the private sector to come back to increase capex, which will, of course, then have a domino effect when it comes to job creation, manufacturing, services, all of that. I think it's important for the government to uh, invest in infrastructure. I think uh, that's extremely important for two reasons. One is uh, it drives demand for many uh, uh, many products, including steel, for instance, or cement, or many other products that we manufacture in India. Secondly, uh, investment in infrastructure uh, creates activity uh, far away from urban centers, you know, in uh, many rural areas. So it's not just about urban infrastructure, but also about rural infrastructure. And construction has always been one of the biggest uh, uh, vehicles for employment. So, you know, uh, so uh, there's a great opportunity for money to flow from the government to people through the construction sector and create demand for many products. So infrastructure does that. The second thing which infrastructure does is it addresses a lot of costs which uh, undermine our competitiveness outside the factory gates. Industry should be tasked to being competitive inside the factory gates and the government, both the state and the center, should work on our competitiveness outside the factory gates. And building infrastructure is one way to drive that. So in many ways, infrastructure to me is the number one. Uh, as far as my wish list uh, is concerned. The second part, continue to work on the ease of doing business. I think the government has been doing a lot of work on it uh, because uh, cost of money is high in India, hence cost of time is high. So the longer we take for clearances, the longer we take to acquire land, the longer we take to build factories, it eats into your margins, it uh, adds to your costs. And ultimately, investment cycle will come back to the private sector, not only when demand grows, but also profitability improves. And I think uh, that's important to recognize. Sanjeev Bajaj, uh, you know, I'm going to borrow that phrase uh, from the all-famous movie, Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. 
for all of this that all of you are talking about, where is the money going to come from? We have seen obviously tax collections go down. Um, this investment hasn't taken off the way it was supposed to be. You, the, gov the central exchequer, she needs to also mobilize revenues to announce a lot of the reforms that you're talking about, Mr. Bajaj. So three sources of money, uh, Nantara, as I always say, let's think of solutions, not just problems. First, as you said, yeah, tax revenues have been down. Don't increase it by increasing taxes. You've cut corporate taxes two years ago, creating, giving a very strong signal, not only to India, to the world. We've not seen the benefit of that. As our economy grows in the coming years, the larger base will give greater revenue. Don't try to do that by raising taxes. So that's one. Second, divestment. If we have to all act and contribute to this economy, we have to invest, we have to build our revenues, we have to thereby pay taxes, this is a great time for the government to identify a very strong intent on divestment and engage and then go ahead and execute. Uh, that will provide the additional funding, and which is very important. And the third is, let's not forget, the world is currently flush with liquidity. It will not be 18 months, two years down the line, because the negative impact of the pandemic will be behind us, and governments will have to start tightening their belts. We can see economies like China already starting to absorb this excess liquidity. We need to create the right tools and avenues to bring that liquidity in, yes, there'll be, there'll be different issues. How much do you bring it in? What does it do to your currency? So there are smart people there in the government that have to think these things through, but attract this money in before it dries up. So Sanjeev Bajaj and Steven Arendra is talking about FDI in the pandemic year. Of course, we have seen India becoming a destination for attracting foreign capital. Uh, it must be, however, said that a lot of that has been thanks to the performance of the stock markets, uh, you've had Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Geo, which has uh, been, of course, in a fundraising drive, and the new economy. And the pandemic has given a big, big push to the new economy, to startups, e-commerce companies, all of that. From the new economy's perspective, Budget 2021 can prove to be a good stage to make the right noise. See, there's an opportunity in Nantara to do multiple things. Um, when you look at the new economy, uh, we have seen the last decade what private equity, digitization, the entire government's focus on Aadhaar and the digital stack is doing uh, to the, has done to digitizing retail and the new economy. And then the impact it has into the kind of startups it creates, the multiplicity of companies, job opportunities, wealth creation that comes from that, private equity gets attracted, venture capital gets attracted. The government now thereafter has moved to the SME uh, sector and has put together a whole digital platform called Ocean for the SME sector. There's a national digital health mission which got announced last year to digitize health as an opportunity in India. So there is there are a number of initiatives that the government is taking which is creating the foundation for the new age economy to prosper. And it's not just about the new age companies. You gave the example of Reliance. It is as much the opportunity, if not a greater opportunity for the older companies to reinvent themselves and become even more competitive than the startups. So it's a, there's a whole new world out there. And we see the government in this case having taken the lead uh, I think more than any other country in the world, I must say so in this area, in building the build, uh, digital building blocks. And we are seeing the benefit of that already. You will continue to see that. Oh, absolutely. India now is home to uh, uh, the third largest number of unicorns. But the gap with America and China at uh, one and two is, of course, still very, very large. We've seen the government set up a panel for the first time for startups uh, with industry veterans. Uh, so let's see how this one pans out. But Chandrajit Banerjee, I'm going to give you the final comment. I think uh, the biggest takeaway for me from this entire conversation with the three of you has been don't focus on just one year. This budget has to set the stage for the next couple of years. Don't increase taxes. Don't bring in legislation which will imp uh, impact uh, manufacturing. So a bit of status quo would also be a good thing. You don't want to put in too many things, confuse people, have too many rules, etc. 
I don't think it should be status quo, Inta, but then, you know, you need to, you, there are there are many priorities today, as you see, uh, as far as the government is concerned. And uh, in the last few minutes, we talked about quite a few infrastructure, uh, healthcare, education, defense. I think these are, I, I mean, I want two, two points that we did not talk about, and I want to include them into the priorities, is defense and sustainability. Because these are things that we would like to see very much coming uh, to be very important for, for for the country to come in. And and you talked about new, uh, new the new sectors. And I would think that there has to be uh, there has to be you know uh, we need to see how we can look at digitization to be an important uh, message coming from the uh, from the budget, including uh, you know uh, 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 when we talk about private sector investments coming back or jobs being creating created. So I think it cannot be status quo because uh, we need to see a huge impetus towards uh, uh, towards uh, job creation for 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 livelihoods. So a balance between lives livelihood. And above all, we have to focus very strongly this on this budget on growth because again, as Sanjeev said, that it's not that this year that is uh, going to be uh, what we should be looking out for. It is next year, and we should be prepared for it. And I think we need to be very careful. You know, earlier during the show, you asked about uh, where will the money come from. I think we have to look at uh, you know uh, at many many ways like. We have to look at the deficit in a in a three year framework, and I would look, really look forward to the budget doing that, and should announce a sort of a calibrated spending that will gradually bring back a, a, a prudent de fiscal deficit. So all of this can 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 really make it to be one of the most. Uh, I mean, after 1991 and 97, this could be the budget to look out for. Oh, absolutely. I think it's also because India was fiscally prudent from 2014. We were able to show more resilience and do that jugalbandi as well with the Reserve Bank of India. That has been a big ask uh, from industry and st economic stakeholders for many years now. A more calibrated approach when it comes to fiscal deficit, changes in FRBM. We had seen a committee also that had been set up. Let's see, budget 2021 changes that. And of course, we need qualitative spending by the government. Uh, gentlemen, I could go on and on. There's so much to be talked about, but this is all the time I have. And I'd like to thank uh, all of you for joining us uh, on this special. You've been watching this ET Now CIS pre-budget special.